We are going to talk about the heat transfer in the atmosphere in this video clip. So we have four processes of heat transfer. We know that conduction, convection, advection, and ray radiation. So we are walking through each of these four one by one. So conduction. The transfer of heat from molecule to molecule within a substance is called uh, conduction. So if you're holding one end of a metal straight pin between your finger and place a flaming candle under <coughs> the, excuse me, uh, the other end, uh, because of this energy they are observing from the flame, the molecule in the pin vibrate faster. The faster vibrating molecule cause adjoining molecule to vibrate faster too. This in turn passing vibrational energy onto their neighboring molecule and so on rapidly, gradually happening this process until the molecule at the finger end uh, of the pin begin to vibrate rapidly. This fast moving molecule eventually cause the molecule of your finger to vibrate more quickly. Heat is now being transferred from the pin to your finger. And both the pin and your finger is feeling hot. If enough heat is transferred, your finger will um, become painful and you will drop the pin. The transmission of the heat from one end of the pin to the other end and from the pin to your finger occur by the process that called con conduction. So conduction is the energy transfer process through solid materials um, with this process. So heat transfer in, in this fashion, fashion always follow from warmer to colder region. Generally, the greater temperature difference, the more rapid heat will transfer. That's the normal rules. Well, when materials can easily pass passes the energy from one molecule to another, they are considered to be a good heat conductor, conductor of heat or heat conductor. How well they conduct heat depends on how their molecules are structurally bonded together. So if you look at this table 2.2 here, it shows that solids such as metals are good heat conductor. Um, it is often difficult, therefore, to judge the temperature of the metal object. For example, uh, you, if you are grabbing a metal pipe or a metal beam, whatever you like, uh, in a room temperature, it will seem to much colder than it actually is because the metal conduct heat away from your hand more quickly. So uh, we know the air air is a extremely poor heat conductor. Uh, this is wh why um, like the insulation materials have a large numbers of air space trapped within them. So air is a such poor heat conductor that in calm weather, the hot ground only warm a shallow layer of air a few centimeters thick by conduction. So this is the process that the vertical transfer, sorry, this is uh, the heat transfer uh, through solid material that is conduction. But this energy actually needed to carry it out somewhere else. So either it is vertically or it is horizontally. So we have another process we call convection. So convection, the transfer of heat by mass movement of the fluid, such as the fluid is air or water. So transfer of heat by mass movement is called convection. These types of heat transfer takes place in liquid and gas because they can move freely and it is possible to set up current within them. So convection happens naturally in the atmosphere on a warm and sunny in a certain area of Earth's surface that absorb more heat from the sun than the others. So as a result, the air near the surface is heated somewhat unevenly. So air molecule adjacent to this hot surface bounce against them and 
therefore gaining some extra energy by conduction first and then heated air expand become and this expanded air and become this then less dense and then surrounding air cooler air this expanded warm air is buoyed upward and rises in this manner a large bubble of air, warm air rises and transfer heat uh, upward that's vertical so cooler heavier air flows towards the surface to replace the rising air this cooler air become heated in terms rises and cycle is repeated again and again and again in the meteorological language this vertical exchange of heat is called convection and the rising air bubbles are known as thermals so the rising air expands and gradually spread outward it then slowly begin to sink sink down near the surface it moves back into the heated region replacing the rising air in this way a convective circulation or thermal cell it produced in the atmosphere so in a convective circulation convective circulation um, the warm rising air pools and in the atmosphere shrink is compressed and warm so we'll be talking about that when the, the other video about that so now the another process another process we learned about that the vertical exchange of heat through replacement of the molecule of the air or water that's called convection now what happened if we carried out this energy into other places that call advection so horizontal moving power of this circulation called wind is carried of those pro like carried properties of this air in that particular area with it that transfer of these properties by horizontally moving air is we call this advection so for example um wind blowing across a body of water will pick up water vapor from the evaporating surface and transport it elsewhere in the atmosphere if the air cools the water vapor may condense into cloud droplet and release latent heat in a sense then heat is advected or carried out by the water vapor as it is swept along with the wind earlier we saw that and um, this is an important way to redistribute heat energy into the atmosphere so this is called advection so why actually i'm bothering with all this process because all this process conduction convection advection and another one this coming radiation all this process in the atmospheric for circulation if you would like to know the atmospheric circulation those are very very crucial and important um, message that you need to know so the last one is we would, we would call 